Hello there Reason People, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel. And today we're going to be looking at how we can take propulsion and how we can get the data from propulsion directly to the sequencer. Also using this method you will see that we can very very quickly change our devices what propulsion is actually connected to without having to redo absolutely loads of wiring. At the moment as what you can see is I've actually dropped a player device on top of propulsion called a CV player tap which is also from Panda and it's a free device. Please note this player device does not stay on top of this device. I've literally put it onto this device so I'm not having to drag the wires across the screen. Once I've actually wired this player device up as you can see I'm just going to take it, I'm going to take it down and to place it on top of my con, all I'm going to do is hold down my shift key and I can drop it. So now um, when I hit run you can see pattern I'm playing every single note on the con. Quite straightforward so far. Now to get this um, into sequencer well all you should do is really is set your um, loop markers where you actually would like it so if, if you've only got one bar you can obviously set this to one bar and you can copy and paste it once you've got the pattern into your sequencer or you've got four bars put it to four bars and all you need to do is click on send to track. So when we click on send to track it has a think about it and as we have a look here, here is our data now in the sequencer, all ready for us. Great. So as I said, the second part of this, I'm just going to turn that bypass off, um, is why the advantages of actually sending it to the tap in the first place. Um, there's nothing now stopping me coming and grabbing any kind of instrument, like I can actually grab that redrum and just drop it there. And I'm now talking to my redrum. So if we push run, you can see it's playing every single one in the redrum. Or I can come down and pick up, say, uh, look at the right mic. So we put that in there, and as you can see, we're now playing that. So it's so you can very, very, very quickly change what some devices you have under it. Now you could say, well, actually, in this particular case, oh, it's only got eight channels, and obviously we've got eight more which are not going anywhere, and I can actually stack two of these devices together. Um, and the way to do that is I'm going to just click and combine it up. So now we've combined it up. I'm going to take the tap and put it on top of the combinator. So it's actually still playing. Um, let's grab another totally different instrument so you can layer up more than one instrument. Uh, there we go. I, I always build these outside of the combinator rather than drop them straight in because it's now got its um, own mix channel. And I'm also going to just rename it at this stage because when you drag and drop a device into a combinator, it will actually rename the mixer device to the same name as the combinator. So this way, if I drag and drop this into here, it's now still got its name, so I don't get confused about what swap um, its channel is which. So now, as you can see, we've got two things going on. But the thing is, as this is playing number one, that's also playing number one. And it's also playing the number one lane from the propulsion, which is what we don't want. So what we can do is we can set ourselves some zones up for these different devices. And so here in the key range, we can come down and we're going to set the first device to hit the first eight lanes. And then when we select the second device, we can now set this range obviously to hit um, the last eight lanes. So now, um, at the moment, all we need to do is bring this transpose down because obviously Umph is looking at a different uh, note range, but now you can see it's playing all 16. And very straightforward, as I say, just by setting these ranges up and doing a keyboard split. It's as simple as that. Anyway, thank you for watching and bye for now.